It's Nina here and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how the Moments of Missing became a song. So I was kind of in a weird phase of my life where I was between albums and I really wasn't sure if I wanted to make another one because I feel like with albums there should be like a purpose of you doing it and not just a oh, year as an album. So I was kind of just trying to find what that would be and I was between labels at the time and I just thought, do you know what, I'm just going to do what I love doing, which is writing music. So I kind of went head first into songwriting for other artists. Um, and then I started getting a few cuts, country song cuts, which was very random, with The Shires. And then I had a few pop cuts with Olivia Holt, um, Lego, which was fun, some DJs. And it all just kind of became this thing for me. So I was doing that every day in sessions with these artists and writers and although I loved it I was always writing about their story or writing about something that was kind of very vague so that other people could relate to it and um, that kind of became like a, a job as such and then I got news that um, one of my favourite pop stars Rihanna had heard my song um, or her label I had put it on hold and I was like oh my god like I mustn't be totally shit so I mean it's quite unlikely that it'll ever happen but that kind of filled me with a bit of confidence and a bit of um, hope again that maybe I wasn't totally rubbish and that I, I really wanted to make another album and I went home quite a few nights after these sessions and I would sit in my studio when everyone else was sleeping. I live in London so it's a very noisy place but between about 11 at night and 2 in the morning it would just be silent and everyone would be sleeping and I would have no emails or social media stuff, it would just be me in my little studio learning how to produce. So that's when the moments I'm missing came about and I was like I just want to write a song that nobody else could sing and it doesn't sound like anything else I just want to do something that feels really honest and really true to me so that's what I did and then I put a little snippet onto Instagram I think it was and Twitter and lots of you commented about how much you liked it and it was a reaction that I hadn't had about my music in quite a while so I felt like the song had something special about it and then I re-signed to Cooking Vinyl and they were like, we love this song. And then I wrote most of the album and I was like, this needs to be the first song because I feel like it's a good introduction and it's one of my favourites. And then I reached out to my friend Goody Grace, who's a singer-songwriter from Canada. And I'd met him through Nash, who did Hate You, I Love You, which you probably heard. And we had this writing day at Abbey Road and I loved what Goody did, his guitaring and his singing and his lyrics, everything was just amazing. And I really wanted to collaborate with him. So I sent the song to him and I was like, can you put like a middle eight thing on this? So he did. And then I took it to my friend Jordan Riley, who's an upcoming producer. And I was like, Jordan, I need you to sort out the drums. So he kind of added a few sprinkles here and there. And then it became a song and now it's out. So that's the story of the moments of missing. It's quite a long one. And there'll be more music coming your way soon. Thank you very much. Bye.